Well, happy August 2019, everybody. This is Ed and Fast Track Video. We're going to uh, start working with the aromatics uh, with the drip pan that will be below the Snake River Farms Grade A brisket. So we'll add some uh, uh, interesting spices and some fumes that will go right up into the uh, rub and the meat itself. So. Um, I'm doing something different this time. I'm, I'm cooking some bacon uh, because I, uh, this is the hickory uh, bacon I get uh, at Sam's Club. Um, seems to do the job. It's a thick piece of bacon and all I'm doing is I'm going to put the bacon once it's cooked into the drip pan. I'm going to put the grease in it. I'm going to put uh, the spices from my backyard, some water, fill this thing up uh, just to, and along with some bourbon cream here as you can see now one of the things I want to make note this is more for myself than anybody uh, and this is the spices that I just basically pruned off of my garden uh, plenty there and I got to separate the uh, stems from uh, the leaves um, so this is going to just add some fumes of flavor uh, while it's the uh, grill is uh, smoking with the charcoals and the uh, post oak. So uh, this will do its job and uh, you know it works fine with me. Uh, it's normally what I do to keep uh, the meat moist. Uh, this is going on a 12 hour trip tonight. Uh, we will start to put it on the grill at 8 and the thing that I noticed when it was all done I was able to strain out all this stuff there was still plenty of juice left and uh, from that I was able to uh, strain it out and make gravy off of it if we really need it. Um, in the case of maybe the flat part of the meat um, yeah you might want to use some of that gravy but in terms of the point, there's plenty of fat there and flavor. Uh, I don't really need anything on that side at all. So this was a really fun uh, experiment and experience, uh, you know, cooking this brisket. This is my second Snake River Farm brisket. I did buy two in June, and I froze one all the way up until August, uh, about a month and a half later. So this is really going to be um, uh, kind of like a highlight over my first attempt. This is my fourth attempt of making a brisket and I seem to have gotten down a lot of stuff uh, since my uh, inception of cooking a brisket. Uh, fire management, uh, setting the time and, and kind of doing the set it forget it kind of mentality. Uh, it seems to work fine. Don't seem to have too much of an issue. Now you can see I'm putting some bourbon cream in there, adding a little flavor there onto the grease and the bacon. And then I just bring the other bacon back in. Um, but I didn't really have too much of an issue in regards to, um, you know, this attempt this time. Um, I was more concerned of when I got into the stall point of 165 on the internal meat uh, because there is a stall that briskets tend to do um, and there's a way to get out of it and this time I did follow suit with some people that were saying at that time you it's good to wrap the meat and that's just what I did with wrapping paper but I noticed that with this brisket, it's a little bit wider than I've anticipated. The wrapping paper was a little bit challenging, as you will see and find out. So, as you can see here, I'm just trying to saturate the bacon with the uh, uh, with the bourbon cream and the you know the grease there, and then I'm going to transfer it over onto the pan.
Okay, so as you can see, this is what uh, the Snake River Farm beef brisket grade A looks like. And as they package it, uh, as you can see, it's boneless, SRF gold. It's almost 16 pounds. Um, this is a really nice piece of meat. Um, I really enjoyed uh, trimming it and putting the rub in. Uh, I was very skeptical with the rub. I was trying to match it as much as I can with the last uh, rub that I did with uh, Sam's Club brisket. Uh, as you can see, this is my fourth attempt. I was putting four fingers up there. But here's the scoop. Um, this brisket um, is different than prime. Um, I've noticed this, this is my second one that I've had. Um, it's different. So here we have the pan here that has the bacon and the seasonings, the water and uh, the bacon drippings. And we're just going to set up this grill here. Um, you'll see pretty quickly how I set this thing up. Now, I got the post oak wood in uh, basically in sticks. So I got it at a firm price of $24 from the uh, woodshed in Orange County. It does have a nice odor smell on the wood. And what I try to do in terms of prepping this is I chop these down too. So for fist size, you know, wood chunks. And now I try to position them into the grill. Uh, keep in mind my, my previous experiences with the other uh, cookings I've done over the weeks. Uh, I've never really filled up the uh, Kamado with all, you know, all the way across with uh, charcoals or lump chunks, woods. Um, but in this case here, we are going to fill this up because we're going 12 hours of uh, smoking. And uh, to be honest, this is, I filled this thing up and it did last all the way almost 12 hours, uh, including the one hour set time. If anything, 13 hours. So somewhere between 12 and 13. And as you can see here, I'm picking and choosing. I'm not going to use all of this wood, oak wood. I'm just going to use some of it don't really need to overpower uh, the brisket with, you know, a lot of wood, uh, wood smelling on the uh, brisket. And in reality, it really didn't have that smell. Uh, it did have the smell of the aromatics on the drip pan, and it also had, the, you know, some of this wood flavoring as well. But it's not, it's kind of like a note or a hint of smoke. So we're going to move on and I'm going to show how this charcoal is in place too. Okay, so here you see that I put the charcoals in. I'm pulling some of them out, uh, but I had some already in the chimney the BBQ Dragon Chibney, and I'm just taking some, see I'm trying to uh, leave an area for the charcoals to just pour into so that it uh, heats up that area, and, and just keep in mind right there, uh, you know, where my hand is, is there's the damper, the lower damper, and that has an opening that I could actually open once the uh, uh, charcoals are in place and they're heating up accordingly. As you can see, I'm lighting up the charcoals on the chimney. And this is so simple for me to do nowadays. I really have no problem trying to get a fire going. Um, this is so easy. It just takes a few minutes to just get it started. And then about I leave about 10 minutes to get it. Uh, the charcoals kind of heated up and looking nice and and cooked like it's uh, ready to be poured onto the grill. So as you can see now it really looks like it's cooked so I'm going to just pour it on in. And I pour it right at that side that's close to the damper because that's where I want to control the fire with the air going into the system. 
It's the only place I'm going to be able to control this fire is right there where the damper is. So, because I'm going to be putting grates on top of this, a deflector plate, and that seasoning pan full of seasons. I'm going to make some adjustments here with some of the charcoal just to make sure that it's sitting in a way that it can transfer that heat. Now, on another note, just to let everybody know, this is not a good time to throw in the meat. This is a time where you want this uh, fire to settle in and get set. And so I wait, you know, in this type of 12-hour uh, cooking, I wait an hour for the brisket to uh, come into play uh, where I put it in there. So I try to get all the dirty smoke off the grill, which right now there's a lot of dirty smoke, and you'll see that. But I'm just trying to set up the grates, the deflector plate, and the pan. We'll see this in a moment here. Now this might look like I'm diffusing, or me not diffusing, but I'm doing indirect cooking because I had the fire on one side. And that may be a truth behind that. But the reality is, is I, it's the only way I can keep that fire burning all the way across is if I have it close to the damper. And that's the only way I can get real good cooking and evenness uh, with this grill. Everything seems to work fine with this thing. As you can see, I have now the drip pan below the grate that I'm going to put the meat in. But I don't have the meat in there right now. We're going to wait an hour and wait till this gets set. And if you can really see, I haven't really poked up. Um, I'm, you're just noticing that I'm over above the 200 mark. I'm just showing where I have my dampers set. They're pretty much open all the way. Uh, and the reason, and see, there's all that smoke there. That, that's what I consider as dirty smoke because it's not really, it's heavily coming out. And in an hour, you'll see that uh, that dirty smoke is not there anymore. And the temp is set somewhere between 230 and 250, which is exactly what I want to see. So um, here's where I have the meat. First thing I'm doing here, as you can see, is I'm sharpening the knife. That's my fishing knife I've had for many, many years, since 2002. I use it for, you know, filleting my fish that I get from the ocean. I usually get yellowtail and uh, albacore. But I haven't gone fishing in a long time because of the pricing of getting into a six pack is phenomenally expensive. Anyways, uh, this is what the Snake River Farm beef brisket 16 pounder grade A looks like. I'm gonna get the web casing off of this. I'm moving the trash can over because getting that web casing, uh, well the web casing is one thing, but getting the cryovac is another thing in itself too. And you really don't want to splatter that blood that's in there. This is a wet age brisket, uh, just to let everybody know in case if I had not mentioned it. So we're going to just start to peel things off. Uh, you know, it's tr kind of tricky. You get a little heavier in the meat, more than 16 pounds. Uh, you could have easily drop that meat, you know, when you try to open that cryovac all by yourself. So anyways, um, as you can see here, I'm going to get ready to cut it, uh, the cryovac, and carefully get the brisket out of that uh, cryovac and throw the cryovac right into the trash to prevent any form of uh, you know, germs and, and you know, diseases that will come from this blood and the meat of the meat. So as you can see, I'm trying to bring it up by my single hand. I had to use both hands, really. 
um, holding it on the uh, point, shaking off any blood on that. I really had to pat dry this thing and clean up the, the tray as well in order to start the rub. But I want to make sure that I got all the blood taken out of this, rinse and clean my hands as well, and uh, move forward. Now looking at this side of the meat, not on the fat side, but on the right, that whole area is oxidized. So there's a lot of trimmings I'm going to be doing to clear out things. Anything that's oxidized, I just throw it away. I, I, there's no way I'm going to really reuse it. Now that part where my hand is, is the cap. Uh, that's where the whole layer of fat is. And I am going to be smoking this brisket fat cap down. Um, I will be trimming out this meat mainly on the point, but I'm keeping the fat on the uh, flat side. Um, only because that's the side that gets, you know, you're really into the meat at more than you are with any fat. So I want to make sure that that's available there. As you can see, I'm lifting that part of the meat. I will be lifting this brisket up only while I'm cutting, only to get rid of the silver skin that's on this meat. There is silver skin on this type of meat on both the front and on the top and the cap side, but there's more fat on the cap side. So, And as you can see, the direction of where the meat is uh, leaning towards there's several things I want to do with this meat. Um, there's one side I'm going to score the meat so that I know that that is the top side or the, uh, the top side of the main meat and not the cap side. As you can see, I'm trimming out the fat and the silver screen. So, and some of that fat may have ground meat in it, so I'm leaving it off the side because I may grind that meat along with beef chuck to make burgers. So um, this is always a fun thing to do here, but I'm gonna move forward now. Okay, here's the rubs I'm using tonight. Uh, kosher salt, coarse pepper, um, and uh, brown sugar, all right? And I use the Akaya Pearl um, to basically measure the amount of uh, brown sugar, salt, and pepper I put in here. Boom! I fast forward the video with all that uh, rub to get to this point here, which is I'm going to start putting the meat in the grill. It's one hour later and we're going to put it in and we're going to try to get the set time back up around 2.30 to 2.50 and uh, we're just going to leave it alone for six hours. Okay, it's two o'clock, a little after, and uh, we're at a temp here a little bit above 250. We have a little bit of smoke coming out, but nothing intrusive. Um, it doesn't, nothing seems to be looking too bad here. Um, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to check it right now with the probes and uh, see where we're at with this and uh, move forward. What I've noticed here is we've come to a stall, is what I'm calling it, and what most people do call it, it's when it just sits around 165. 
You'll see this when I do my next probing uh, about 35, 45 minutes later. Because these temps here are remaining at around 165, 170. And uh, I'm not really getting an accuracy. Well, I'm getting an accuracy there. So I'm going to foil that area right there so that that way the meat doesn't dry up and get burned. And I've seen this before with Aaron Franklin's briskets. See that this thing went back up to three, I mean 250. So it's not like, I may end up having to wrap this. I just don't want to end up getting it burned 56 um, see I'm gonna let it sit here rather than I did you know about 20 minutes ago see that's 159 at the point I'll do this again but you see over here now is like 174 at the point so Things are getting cooked. This might have got cooked a little quicker than I anticipated here at six hours. So that's 161 there. That's 100. Well, let's see, it's going up again. See, now this is where I want this probe to, I want to really check it. So that's 150. So everything seems to be at around 160. And what I'm beginning to think is I might want to end up, uh, it might be on a stall right now. Let's see, it's at 160, 161. See, that's 177, 179, 180, 181. So, I'm looking at both ends here as being close, you know, in the 170 area. I'm thinking what I may want to do to preserve the juices right now is it's better to start wrapping. Better to start wrapping. 163, 164. I hear it. Sixty it's still going up. That's sixty two. One ninety. So yeah, one eighty four. This one here in the middle is at one seventy one. So we're gonna we're gonna give it it's getting there. We're gonna do another we're at four thirty almost five o'clock right now. We're gonna come back out here at six. Okay. Okay, well it looks like the fire went out. Um but we still got smoke coming out, so I'd say we're let's let's open this right now and see where we're at on this meat. Okay, 
175. say, you know, we're not going to get any farther with this, I mean, right now, and it looks like at the point it's right up there near 200, so I'm going to pull it out and set it for dry right now, and uh, we'll get this thing going, cool down, I'm going to cool it down in here without anything turned on. So. 